In this video, I'm going to show you how to create your own custom widgets and components with tkinter and Python. Hey guys, John Alder here from tkinter.com, and in this video, we're going to look at building out our own custom widget classes. tkinter is great. There are lots of widgets that do lots of things, but it becomes much more powerful if you can start to sort of define your own widgets and group them together in classes and then call those classes anytime you want. So we can change how widgets look by default and then call them whenever we want. We can group several widgets together in a certain configuration and then just call that whenever we want. All kinds of different great things, very interesting, and that's what we're gonna look at in this video. So let's head over to our code I'm using the Sublime Text Editor in the Git Bash Terminal as always. And as always, you can find a link to the code in the pinned comment section below, as well as a link to the playlist with all the other videos in this object-oriented Kinter series, so check that out if you haven't so far. And be sure to grab your totally free PDF copy of my Kinter Widget Quick Reference Guide book. This thing is awesome, over 150 pages with all the Kinter Widget attributes. Grab your totally free copy today. Just head over to tkinter.com forward slash widget dash book in your email address, and I'll send that right out to you. And while you're there, think about membership in tkinter.com and get all my Kinter courses, all my future courses for one low price. Use coupon code YouTube to get 30% off membership if you're interested. Okay, so I've got our basic starter code that we always have, and I'm calling this custom underscore widget dot pi. And this is going to be sort of a mix of functional programming and object oriented programming. We're going to create our custom widget components using object oriented programming, class based programming, but we're going to call it using functional programming. So uh, you can update this however you want, but this will allow us to learn the concept fairly easily. So let's start out by creating a class. So I'm just going to call this my widget. So we're going to create a set of widgets here, and this is going to be a tkinter frame. And you can do this several different ways. You can have a class define one widget and then you could set all the attributes a certain way and then just call that widget whenever you want. So if you want a button that's always blue and giant and has certain relief and uh, maybe has an image on it, you could create a class for that type of image and then just call it like you would call any widget with tkinter. Or you can group several widgets together in a class and then call that and that will pull in whenever you want. So that's what we're gonna do because it's a little bit more interesting. So let's define this as we always would, underscore, underscore, init, underscore, underscore. And we wanna pass in the self and the parent. And for this example, I'm just gonna put two widgets in here just to keep it simple. And we want a label and we want the text for it. So we want, need to pass that in. And we also want a button and we want the text for that. So we'll pass that in. Now this is a lowercase L. I know it kind of looks like a capital L, but it's definitely lowercase. So, okay, that's just what Sublime does. Uh, you'll see what this stuff's all about in just a second. So as always, we wanna call our super dot underscore underscore init underscore underscore. And here we'll just set the master to our parent app. There we go. Now inside of here, I'm gonna grid these cause I want basically a label and a button right next to each other, right? So that's the sort of custom widget we're gonna create, a label and a button next to each other. They'll always come out together that same way. So I'm gonna use the grid system for that. So we'll put them right next to each other. So let's go self dot, and we need to go row configure. Let's just set up our grid system this way. Uh, we want zero and let's give this a weight of one. So everything's gonna have the same weight. So they'll be sort of the same size and everything. And let's go self dot column configure. Uh, and here, how many columns do we want? Well, let's have a zero column and a one column. And again, we want the weight to just be one. And I don't even think we really need a uniform, but I don't know, call this anything you want. We'll give it a uniform of Z. So they all are the same uniform size and, and weight and everything. So, okay, that looks good. Now let's, I, should, I suppose I should probably comment, uh, set up our grid stuff. <laughs> Now let's come down here and create our widgets. What widgets do we want? Well, like I said, we want a label and that's just gonna be in self and we want the text to say whatever we've passed in as our label text. And we can get crazy with this. We can go, I don't know, font equals Helvetica and like size 18, nice and big. And then we want to dot grid this. So let's just go ahead and do that now. And this is gonna be in a row zero, column zero, and that's fine. Okay, so we've got our label. We also now want a button, and that's gonna be in self. We want the text of the button to equal whatever our button text is that we are gonna pass in as an attribute, sort of, right? And that looks good. 
And then we can dot grid this guy. And we want to put him in row zero as well, but column one. That will be fine for now. Now let's self dot pack to pack these onto the screen. All right, so strictly speaking, this is all we need. Now, outside of this class, anytime we want to use this little custom widget we've created, this custom configuration of widgets, we just call it like we would any other widget. So, you know, my underscore widget, we want to put it in root, right? Because the name of our app is root. And then what attributes do, do we want to give it? Well, let's give it the text one. That's going to be the label text. And for the label on the button, let's have it say button one or whatever, right? So this text one and this button one will get passed in as our label text and our button text. That's all there is to it. Let's go ahead and save this, head over to our terminal. Now we're probably going to want to tweak this. I'm in my c slash tkinter.com directory and let's run custom underscore widget dot pi. And when we do, we get text one button one and they're scrunched right up together. That's not great. Let's go ahead and play around with that and make it look a little bit better. Uh, Let's see, when we grid these guys, let's expand them. So let's give it a sticky of north, south, east, and west. We'll do that for each of them. And then when we pack it, what do we wanna do? Let's also sort of fill it to the entire area. So we can set expand equals true and fill equals both. And if we wanna give these some padding, we can give it a pad X of say 10, so the padding between them, there's a little bit of space. And if we want padding above and below, let's go pad Y of also 10. So, okay, that should make it look a little bit better. If we run this guy again, now you see we've got text here, it's expanded out the whole area. We've got this button here, it's filled out to the whole area. Okay, there we go. Now that's cool, but the neat thing about this is we now have a thing we can use whenever we want. We can make as many of these as we want, right? And all we do is just, sort of create another one. So if we want three of them, uh, let's change this to text two and text three and button two and button three. Save this, run it, one quick simple change. And now we've got three of these guys, right? And they expand and fill and resize nicely. Very, very cool. So I, I love this, this is great, right? You could use this in a zillion different ways and that's all there is to it. Now. You might be thinking, well, how do we kind of use these buttons? Well, there's a bunch of different ways to do it. Uh, very quickly, let's see. We can pass in a name for each button, right? So let's come up here and let's also pass in a name. So I'm going to call this uh, my underscore button one and have this one be my button two and my button three, right? Now we also need to add that thing to our initialization function, right? So let's call this uh, button underscore name. And if you wanted to do the same thing for a label, if you wanted to name the label so you could keep track of it, you could do that as well. So here we've got now this button name. So let's come down here when we actually create the button, right? Let's give this a command of, and let's just create some function, right? And we might call this self.change. Now we also wanna pass in that button underscore name. Well, we can't do that with tkinter with a regular command. We need to make this into a lambda. So this is a lowercase l. And now we're calling this self.change function. So we have to create that function. So outside of our initialization function here, but still inside of our class, let's define change. And we wanna pass in self, and we also wanna pass in the name, which will become this button name. So now we can just do logic, right? So let's say if name equals uh, my underscore button one, well, then we just want to do something. Well, let's just, I don't know, root.title. Let's change the title of our app to uh, button one, right? <laughs> Whatever. Uh, but then we can just LF through all of our buttons. LF name equals my underscore button two. Oh, then this one will say button two. And then LF name equals my underscore button three. And then we'll have this one say button three. And then let's give it an else. And let's just say something else. All right, so now if we save this, come back over here and run it again, 
When we click button one, our title up here changes to button one. When we click button two, it changes to button two and button three, button three. Now we don't have anything else to, to test out the elves. Well, what if we later on made another one of these guys, right? And we called this one text four and button four and my button four. Well, now if we save this and ran it, we have four buttons. We click this one, button one, button two, button three. We click this fourth one. It says something else because it's not one, two, or three. It falls into the else statement. And there you go. So uh, it's sort of a silly way to do it. There's tons of different ways you could, you know, use these buttons. Uh, but that's one way. And uh, yeah, there you go. The point of this is not to create a widget with a text and a button. The point of this is to show you how to create any sort of configuration that you want. You might want an entry box and a button. You might want five buttons in a certain way, you know, you might want four buttons, one that points up, down, left, and right, sort of a little keypad that you want to pull up anytime somebody wants to use it in your app. Whatever sort of strange configuration of widgets you want, you can create using this system as simple as just defining them in their own class and then just, you know, calling that class anytime you want to put that widget onto the screen. Super useful. So are we creating our own widgets? Mm, not really. We're taking the widgets and reconfiguring them in a certain way. And like I said, in this example, we put two, right? You could just put one label and then I would probably call this my label widget or something, right? And then maybe that label, you would change the font to a certain size, a certain color, a certain text, a certain, you know, padding, maybe a certain background, whatever you wanted, it would be a very specific label that then every time you wanted to create that label, you could just call it like we did down here instead of having to redefine it in a big long way like you normally would without doing it this way. It's very, very cool. So those are custom widgets, custom components, and that's all there is to it. So that's all for this video. If you liked it, be sure to smash the like button below, subscribe to the channel, give me a thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm, and be sure to grab your totally free PDF copy of my Kinter Widget Quick Reference Guide book. This thing is awesome, over 150 pages with all the Kinter Widget attributes. Grab your free copy today. Just head over to tkinter.com forward slash widget dash book in your email address. And I'll send that right out to you. And while you're there, think about membership in tkinter.com. You get all my Kinter courses, all my future courses for one low price. Use coupon code YouTube to get 30% off membership if you're interested. My name is John Elder from tkinter.com and I'll see you in the next video.